We're going to begin at the White House, where President Trump spoke out for the first time from the Rose Garden, vowing to send U.S. troops into the streets of American cities if local authorities don't control the protests. Those remarks came just moments after the administration asked police to clear peaceful protesters from the park across the White House so the president could stage a photo op. Cecilia Vega starts us off from that site, St. John Episcopal Church. Good morning, Cecilia. Yeah, George, good morning to you. This was, as you said, that backdrop for that photo op. And now in the face of all of this controversy, the White House is saying that those authorities moved in on those peaceful protesters in order to enforce Washington, D.C. 7 p.m. curfew. But let me tell you what the reality was. Those U.S. Park Police, those Secret Service Police moved in on those peaceful protesters a full 25 minutes before that curfew was supposed to even start. And they cleared the way. And then President Trump showed up right here for that photo op. Outside the White House, protesters. protesters facing off against authorities, kneeling and raising their hands in peaceful demonstration. But then, almost suddenly, U.S. Park and Secret Service police began shoving and hitting, striking this Australian news crew as they were live on the air. Oh, whoa! And as police move in, they fire tear gas on the crowd. While inside the grounds of the White House, a remarkable split screen. The president claiming to be an ally of peaceful protesters. I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful protesters. President Trump called on governors to deploy the National Guard, threatening to dispatch active duty U.S. military to American states if they don't crack down. But to do that, he would have to invoke the Insurrection Act of 1807, a rarely used law that hasn't been enacted since the Rodney King riots in the 1990s. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. And in Washington, D.C., where the president has jurisdiction, President Trump acting with force. As we speak, I am dispatching thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers, military personnel, and law enforcement officers to stop the rioting, looting, vandalism, assaults, and the wanton destruction of property. And then, in a made-for-reality TV primetime moment, the president and his entourage left the White House and walked through that park where protesters had been cleared moments earlier. He went to historic St. John's Episcopal Church, which had been burned in a fire during protests a night earlier. There, the president held up a Bible for the cameras. Is that your Bible? It's a Bible. Standing in various poses for a full minute and a half, he then summoned his top aides to join him in the photo op. Okay, thank you very much. We have the greatest country in the world. Thank you very much, everybody. In Delaware, presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden paid a very different visit to a place of worship, meeting with community leaders at Bethel AME Church in Wilmington. He just hides. Doesn't go away. And when you have somebody in power who breathes oxygen to hate under the rocks, you can duck under the rocks. The remarkable scene in D.C. followed a remarkable conference call earlier in the day where the president berated governors of both parties. If they're going to run over you, you're going to look like a bunch of jerks. You have to arrest people and you have to try people and they have to go to jail for long periods of time. On the call, Illinois Democratic Governor J.B. Pritzker criticizing President Trump's rhetoric. I've been extraordinarily concerned about the rhetoric that's been used by you. People are feeling real pain out there. Um, and we've got to have national leadership in calling for calm and making sure that we're addressing the concerns of the legitimate peaceful protesters. Uh, that will help us to bring order. Now, this church carries significant history in this city, in this country. Every sitting president since James Madison, including President Trump, has attended a church service here. But we are now being told by sources that the president was at least in part motivated to come here, George, for that photo op yesterday to counter those reports that he had been in the White House bunker during the protests here on Friday. Okay, Cecilia, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.